feel like I'm in a dry, cold, dead place and nothing is being produced. And that's something personal to me because that's my calling. It's to provide hope when everything is dead and there's no sense of anything good coming forth. God revives my spirit. And I pray that today that God gives you a word to hold on to that will give, because God wants to give you the desires of your heart. And it's not going to be, I'm like, it's not always going to be a prophetic word or somebody spoke it to you. God will speak it to you himself. You don't have to wait. And I, I'm like, I love when Pastor Bruno comes because he always like speaks and gives direct words to so many people, but not everyone gets a word. And that doesn't mean that you don't need a word or that you want one. But if you look in scripture, I promise you, it is full of promises that God has for us. Right? Because sometimes like, oh, I wish someone would say in the Bible, you will find plenty of promises that God has said to us that we can hold on to as our word. And I know for this year, for me, for 2020, I feel like I have the same word that I keep constantly getting. But God is like, it's just to excite me because sometimes I just, we need that motivation. So for me in this season, it's, it's going to be big, it's going to be grand, and it's going to be full of him. Right? So that's all I'm excited about. I'm like, it's going to be big, it's going to be grand, and it's going to be full of Christ. And if you don't have a word, I want, I want you guys to get a word. By the end of the day, start thinking. I'm going to give you guys some questions to think about so you guys can get your word. And so, as we go to our story, um, I'm going to be talking about a woman with the issue of blood, and you've probably heard this story, it's super common, but she was desiring something and it was healing. And because she desired healing, she went after it. And so the title of my message today is, How Bad Do You Want It? How bad do you want that word for this year? How bad do you want to be able to receive power so that you can be able to make this year the best year you've ever had, right? So we're going to start, and you can turn in your Bibles to Matthew 5. I mean, Mark. <laughs> Thanks, Becky. I'm like, I can't read. So I'm going to start here. Mark 5, 20, 24. And so it says, Jesus went with him, and all the people followed crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years, she had spent everything that she had to pay them. But she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up to him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Have you ever been there? Have you been dealing with the same thing for far too long? She was with the same issues for 12 years. And I was thinking about it. I was like, when you go through something for so long, you feel insane doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. It's so consuming that this issue became her identity. That's how she was known as around the town, right? In addition, she had to deal with the social norms. So back in the day, if a woman was on her menstrual, she couldn't even be out in public. She wasn't allowed to interact with anyone because no one could touch her because she was considered unclean. And I was like, can I be considered unclean so I don't have to go to work? That would be amazing. I'm like, why do we change that? <laughs> I'm like, because we, we wanted to be respected like men, and then we got to deal with it. So. Anyways, but, so I'm not complaining, because I will always go to work when I have to. But my favorite thing about this woman is that she never used anything as an excuse as to why she couldn't be healed. And I, and I really want this to be, let us not use excuses as to why we can't receive what God has for us. 
right? It's the excuses of I'm not good enough, right? I'm not worthy to receive that. I've messed up too many times. I can't get that thing that I want. No, absolutely not. And later on, we're going to talk about what qualified her to be able to receive this healing that she wanted. It wasn't based on her behaviors. It wasn't based on what she did. It was based on something else that we all have inside of us. And so she went against every cultural norm to get her healing. All the gods were against her. And what do you think happened? Mark 29, it says, immediately the bleeding stopped. And she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Do you know who's your source? Who do you go to after you've tried every doctor, every Google suggestion, right? Is it safe to say that going to God is a good idea? Mike spoke about the embrace and the power of a hug. Imagine the power of a touch of the spirit, right? That's the power. That's our source. That's who we go to when we need something so desperately, right? How bad do you want it? But one thing that stuck out to me about her was her thought process. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. She was able to find one more thing that she could do. She exhausted her finances, her time on everything else. All that she had left was faith to believe that his touch was all that she needed. And so what qualified her to be healed? What qualifies us to be able to receive what we need? When I was reading this, I thought, why after 12 years she got it? Why did she have to wait for so long? I don't know. I still don't know why she had to wait that long. But I know that what qualified her was her faith. And God says that, and when I read it later on, you'll see, it was her faith, because faith is born when you can't do it in your own strength, right? And that was funny, because I'm like, I'm talking about faith again. Like, didn't I just talk about faith last month? And God is like, we need to continue to talk about faith in this house until it arises, until it's something that you actually believe in your heart, Right? And I was like, let me get some verses where it says it. Mark 9, 23, it says, everything is possible for one who believes. In Mark 10, it says, your faith has healed you. In 1 Peter 2, 24, it says, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. It's not because of what you've done. It's because of what he did on the cross. Everything that we receive, it always goes back to him, right? Because if everything that we received was contingent on our behavior, I think we would get nothing. <laughs> Just saying. Everything that happens to us, it's surrounded by our faith. And that's really something that God is trying to get us to remember, right? It's our faith. It's not our behavior. It's not what we've done. It's who he is and what he will do, right? So how bad do you want the thing you're praying for? The Lord always meets desperation. When you've had enough and you can't go anymore, that makes room for God to do his thing. But it's easy to have faith down pack when everything is going good. And me and one of my girlfriends, um, Sasha, we were driving to work and we were talking about this. Like, it's so easy to have faith when everything's good. Like, when life is peachy keen, you know, there's no really issues going on. But the moment we face another obstacle that seems impossible, we're back to doubting. We're back to not believing. We're back to not trusting. And then our faith is lost. But... We're not going to let 2020 be the year that we give up. This will not be known as the year that we're just going to shy away and we're just going to let things go by. Every moment is going to count. And whatever it takes, how bad do you want it, we're going to go after it. So let's continue the story. Mark 5, chapter 30. It says, Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? 
His disciples said to him, look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched me? But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. And then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. And we have held on to many things for way too long. And the Lord is telling us, if you want to let it go for real, for real, (laughs) all you need to do is believe and it'll be gone. You may have to be persistent. I'm not saying it's going to happen right away. It took 12 years until she finally received what she had been longing for. But it's going to happen. It will, because God is faithful, right? And we believe that he's going to do what he said he will do. He keeps, he's a God that keeps his promises. So if he promised you something, it's yours. All of his promises, they're yes and amen, right? Sometimes you got to wait, but that doesn't mean that it's not coming. And so I want to leave you guys with three questions that, um, because I'm like, 2020, we're going to be introspective in this Come Alive series, right? Because I don't want it to just be we're going to amp each other up because it's not going to last. You have to go home and think about these things, right? And ponder, where am I lacking in faith? Where am I not believing that he's going to take care of my needs, right? So my first question is, what you want worth the wait? And write this down so you can ask yourself later. Is what I want worth the wait? Waiting is hard, and I remember when I, um, like in my early 20s, not that I'm old, because I'm like mad young, but in my early 20s, (laughs) I'm still in my 20s, I got two more weeks, so (laughs) um, in my early 20s, I really spent those first five years trying to learn who I was. Right? I wasn't trying to rush into a relationship. I wasn't trying. I mean, if he came along, that would have been awesome. But that wasn't my focus. My focus was, what do I even like? What do I want in a significant other? Like, what actually matters to me? Right? The longevity. Like, what, what's going to sustain me in a relationship? Right? Um, I also thought about one thing that was really big was I struggled with insecurity a lot. Right? And so I started reading a lot of books. I'm like, I need to understand why am I so insecure? Where am I, where do I find this confidence? And so because of that, I was able to draw closer to God and I was able to understand who I was in him. Right? Um, One thing that I had wrote down that I wanted to read was, um, I am what I, I never thought I was good enough because I didn't have guys knocking at my door trying to talk to me. So I confused attention with not being wanted. And that was really far. That was like one of the greatest things I learned in that season because I'm like, just because I don't have all these guys trying to get with me, that doesn't mean that I'm not wanted, right? It's like sometimes we like draw like, oh, but they're not paying attention to me. It's not about you. (laughs) And maybe there are things you need to learn by yourself, right? Because if you're going to be constantly seeking that affection and affirmation from other people, you're going to never make it in life because this world isn't full of people who are constantly telling you how amazing you are, right? But how did I learn that? Because it was in my season of waiting. And then I got an amazing husband. (laughs) Right. It was true. And what it was, it was so funny because even though I wanted all this attention, literally all the attention I wanted, Kevin gave it to me. Like, it was like, oh my goodness, it's so weird. Like, he literally pursued the relationship. Like, he was like, oh, I really want this girl. You know, so he, it, it happened, but it was that I needed to know that I was secure in myself with God alone because Kevin couldn't make me happy. A man is not going to, a woman will not make you happy. What's going to make you happy is that you know how to find happiness by yourself, right? So we don't want to stay stuck in that. So that's what waiting really did for me. My second question, so the first one is, what is it that you want 
that's worth, is it worth waiting for? The second is, are you hungry? And I love that Norma was talking about that. Where's your drive and passion to do whatever it takes? Do you want to know what it's like going out without food? Asked Pastor George. I asked Zuma yesterday. She said he has headaches, right? When you're hungry, that means you need something, right? So the hungrier you are, that, that's going to be the passion and the drive that's going to get what you need, right? That hunger, it's, it's like I need more, right? What I have isn't enough. What, what's, what's, it's, what's in my pocket is not sustaining me anymore. We need more, right? So we have to seek him to be able to get those things. Um, and how bad do you want it? How bad do you need that healing, right? How bad do you need Christ to come and heal your heart, right? How desperate are we so that the Lord can come and change our mindset so that we're not stuck in the same cycle of insanity, going through the same thing over and over again, right? What is it that, what in our mind needs to be renewed so that we can get what the Lord has for us? And imagine this woman, 12 years, but she didn't give up. And when she heard that Jesus was in town, she went after him. And so I want to do a call. I still have a couple more things today to say, but I want to do a call. If faith has been on the fence for far too long in your life, then it's time to reach out and touch the hem of his garment with the authority you have and receive his power. I really want you guys to, to understand that he wants to give you good things. In Psalms 84, 11, it says, For the Lord God is our sun and shield. He gives us grace and glory. The Lord withholds no good thing from those who do what is right. He doesn't want to withhold anything from you this year. He wants to give it all. But are you, do you, are you ready? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want what he has for you? I want you guys to join me and stand. Um, and of course, this is my teacher in me. I want to teach you guys something. Um, and so the number 12 has been highlighted to me a lot. And just so you know, God speaks through numbers. Numbers do matter. So if like you see a number consistently, usually it means something like 1111 has a really deep meaning. And I told Kevin to get it for me and he didn't get it for me, but it's okay. <laughs> but we're going to talk about 12 because 12 is what matters, right? And so the woman who had the issue of blood, she had it for 12 years, right? Jesus at that moment and next week, Kevin's going to talk about the story that comes after this. Um, but Jesus was on his way to heal a 12-year-old woman. I mean, a 12-year-old girl. She's not a woman. Um, which means that the woman who was healed had the sickness as long as the girl was alive, right? 12 is also um, in the Old Testament, Jacob, which is one of the fathers of the Jewish religion. Um, he had 12 sons, which represented the 12 tribes of Israel. In the New Testament, Jesus had 12 disciples. This is the first month of 12 months, right? This is the first month. Like, we're in the first, we're here, 12. Um, oh, and then in, we're reading, Kevin and I are reading through Genesis right now, and God numbered our days to 120 years, which means that we have now tw um, 12 decades that we live, right? And we're starting a new decade, right? And today is the 12th. Not sure if you knew the date, but today is the 12th. And so I want to tell you what 12 symbolizes. 12 is a perfect number that symbolizes completeness. It also symbolizes God's power and authority. And that's what we're going to pray that comes alive in us today. So if that's something that you want, I want you to join me in the front so I can include you in this prayer. Right? As I taught the last time, for us to see the gifts of the Spirit in this place, we need this room to be filled with love and unity. 
right? That's when he comes through. That's when he shows us how, how good he is when we have love for each other and when we are able to surround each other and support one another, right? I want to read you this one. In Romans 12, 12, it says, Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. How bad do you want it? If Jesus were to walk in the room right now at this moment, what power would you need to receive? God has given you the authority to ask anything in his name and it'll be given to you. He is not going to withhold a good thing from you. And God, I've been thinking about you all week. And God was showing me that you are a leader, that you're a leader of his army and that he has entrusted you with those that are around you to be able to bring them closer to what it is that gives you peace and what gives you hope in this life. God has not overlooked you. He has not shied away from what he has for you. He has amazing things, but you have to know where you stand. You are important. Gabriel was one of his main angels. You are important. You matter. There is a call on your life to be a leader, and you have to stand. This is the year. This is the year where you get to live out what he has already called you to be. And so many of you, you have amazing things that God has in store for you. And if you need faith to believe that he's going to do it, that he's going to use you, then receive it. Receive it now. The power that you need to know that he is going to be faithful. He is. He's not going to shy away. He's not going to back down on you. Not in 2020. Not when everyone's like clear vision, clarity. He's not going to back down now. So dear God, I pray right now that faith would arise in this room, God. You were passing through this room today and we are grabbing onto your robe, God, because we want you to release the power that we need to get through this year, God. Lord, we pray right now that we would come alive in this place, God. Lord, that we wouldn't back down, God, that this would not be a year that we give up, God, but that we continue to strive, God. We continue to pursue you, God. We continue to believe that you can do the impossible because we want it that bad, God. We want it that bad, God. We're desperate for more of you, God. We're hungry for you, God. Lord, we need more of you, oh God. We need you to guide our thoughts and guide our minds, God, in the way that we live. 